Hey there all you good people, I'm Joe from Joe's Computer Museum. Today I'm taking a look at an oldie but goodie, the CFFA 3000 by R&D Automation. Everyone knows about this card, but I love it so much that I thought it deserved its own review. We'll take a look at the history, installation, configuration, and use of this excellent Apple II peripheral. Warm up the CRT, it's time for another episode. The Compact Flash for Apple II project was started by Rich Dreyer of R&D Automation over 14 years ago. The story behind it is fascinating as best told by him. But the basic idea was to provide modern mass storage for old apples, forever eliminating the problems caused by cursed floppies. Back in the day, the concept of adding new hardware to an old machine was somewhat novel. Now, he didn't exactly come up with the idea of attaching modern mass storage to the Apple all by himself, but his project was one of the first to combine the maker philosophy with professional engineering and elegant design into a polished, finished product that any non-hacker enthusiast could enjoy. Three major revisions later, and we have what I personally think is the gold standard for modern retro add-ons, the CFFA 3000. Bias warning, I absolutely love this card. The CFFA 3000 combines the reliability of flash media, the ease of use of Mac OS, and the convenience of the internet into a single package. Pop in the card, copy your disk backups from your network to a flash drive, plug it into the port and off you go. No fuss, no muss. Now that we're familiar with it, let's take a look at the card in action. Now as you can see here, we got the uh, Compact Flash for Apple II 3000, or the CFFA 3000 card, installed in slot 7 of the Apple II GS. Uh, this card is pretty versatile, it'll run on anything from an Apple IIe or later, it might run on, on, on some other things. I'll, I'll link in some stuff here uh, from Rich Dreher's website, it'll tell you how how that works exactly. But uh, slot 7 is generally the, uh, the slot you're going to want to put that in, because most times people are going to, uh, you know, be using the compact flash card there to uh, hook this thing up as a as basically a hard drive a big mass storage controller you want to be able to boot from it first so you put it in the highest numbered slot and that typically works out pretty well um, what I've done in my installation it's kind of hard to see from this angle but I'll show you in a second is that um, I have uh, routed a USB cable outside of the machine and here it is so you can see right there I've routed that out the back, and uh, that allows me to, you know, just have a little USB device here plugged in that I can plug in and out of the machine super, super easy, super fast. So uh, now uh, let's take a look at the controller settings. Let's look at look at the uh, card uh, card settings uh, from the card menu and and walk you through all that, and we'll see what all that stuff does. Now here's the CFFA 3000 menu screen. Uh, you get into the menu screen by basically tapping the bejesus out of the M key um, when you turn your Apple II on. And uh, we got a lot of settings in here, so let's, uh, let's go through all of these. First one is the Disk 2 slot. That's the, uh, the slot you set when uh, you want to turn on Disk 2 emulation. Uh, card's really cool. It's got a Disk 2 emulation uh, feature, so you can emulate the old 140K disks, uh, especially for operation in uh, DOS 3.3. Uh, here's the disk to assignments. Um, this basically allows you to uh, set which uh, which disk image is going to be uh, on your on your disk two emulation there. Um, on the right, you can see you both got the uh, slot six disk one and disk two options, which is cool, pretty standard. Uh, on the left here, you have where you select the images, and if you hit the space bar, it uh, tabs between the two different uh, two different storage devices, both Compact Flash and the USB. Um, of course, Compact Flash will make more sense for uh, to be used for uh, things like emulating hard drives, and the uh, USB is uh, easier for moving data around between you between your Apple and the internet, or between your Apple and your network. So you want to oh, I don't know save images or whatever. Oops, I hit the wrong button. There we go. Uh, next option there is the smart port devices. This thing will support up to 16 smart port devices, which is pretty gosh darn neat. Um, basically, you know, your block level uh, disk devices like uh, larger floppies or hard drives or whatever. Here's the smart port assignments, and of course this is exactly the same or nearly exactly the same as the other menu. Um, <clears throat> one of the options there, uh, 
to switch between compact flash and USB. Uh, over here at the right, you got your your disk selections. As you can see, there's a letter next to it, C. That means it's on the compact flash card, and it'll, if it's on the USB card, it says U. So that's a pretty easy way for you to tell where that image might be living. Uh, next option there, the import to disk image. That is really cool. Um, basically, if you got old disks that you need to back up pres or preserve or whatever, you run that option there, and you can uh, pick your input slot or whatever and dump those uh, those disks to images and uh, preserve those forever. So that's really neat. Uh, new blank disk image is a really cool feature that's added in here. Say you're running inside your operating environment, whether it's GSOS or something else, and you want to mount a new drive, a new blank disk. You don't have to shut the machine down and pull out your media and go, go create it. So you can do it right from the user interface here, so it's pretty cool there. Other settings. Um, assign first. Uh, basically, this gives you a little extra boot order. Um, situation for the device. Uh, you can you can tell it whether it wants to start booting or start selecting from compact flash loaded images or USB images. So it gives you another extra boot over boot order uh, selection beside just the slot. Um, raw compact flash card settings. The, the, it's just uh, nerdy settings that allows you to uh, go in and um, change the settings for uh, the uh, the CFFA2 compatible formatted compact flash cards. Uh, USB settle delay. Some people got uh, really wacky USB devices and sometimes they need uh, to turn that delay up to deal with those devices so that allows you to do that. You know, patching the DOS uh, read write track sector for speed, always leave that on, that makes it faster. Um, you know, some older software might be incompatible with that, but that doesn't really matter that much. You just switch the setting and it works. Uh, menu at boot. This basically allows you to say, hey, I'm going to uh, wait this amount of time uh, before I st uh, continue booting after uh, waiting to listen for the M key. And then there's some other uh, uh, settings in there that uh, I'll leave it up to the uh, to the uh, viewer here to uh, look at the documentation and see what those things mean. So now that we've gone through all of those settings, uh, let's take a look at how quickly the machine boots up, uh, booting from both a compact flash and USB from the same image. Final thoughts? This is my favorite retro peripheral. Now, it does have relatively slow speed due to lack of DMA support in the current version of the firmware, but the convenience of USB makes up for any shortcomings. I can boot up my GS off the compact flash card and use the USB stick to move data, files, and disk images to the GS from my normal PC. That, in my biased opinion, makes this oldie but goodie number one on my list. Rich Dreher really has set a quality precedent for retro peripherals that we all enjoy today. Well, that's all for today's episode. Is there something you'd like me to review in my next video? Maybe you'd like to see me review one of my old computers? Drop me a comment and let me know. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button or subscribe. And remember, 8 bits are all you need. The CFFA 3000 combines the re- the, 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 the. Sorry about that, folks.